Hello everyone, and welcome to Deck Building Derezzed. I'm your host, Code Marvelous, and today I am joined by another guest from across the Atlantic, all the way from Oxford, United Kingdom. I've got Brendan. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks very much for coming on, man. And for those of you who don't know Brendan, Brendan uh, took Geist uh, to a to the London Regionals and uh, won the whole thing, which is pretty exciting, I must say. Yeah, it was quite a surprise for me, but uh, Geist managed to do it. Yeah, it's good. So I wanted to have you on so that we could talk a little bit more about this list and about the state of Geist. Geist has been a pet project for me and also a couple of the other guests that I've had on the show. And uh, as really somebody who, the first player to have serious competitive success with them, I wanted to uh, have you on to talk about it. No, it's a real pleasure. I'm looking forward to talking about him. So let's go over a little bit of the basics. Uh, for those of you who might not be too familiar with him, the real power in Geist is in his single link, and that whenever you use a trash can ability, you get to draw one card. So he has inherent click compression, similar to, I guess, a Haley, but without a cap on how many times you can use it in a turn. The cap's kind of interesting, because it means you can bank all those effects for one turn or one power turn and uh, you don't have to plan out your individual installs like Haley to make the most of it. You can just dump everything on the board and then use all the trash cans at once if you need to. Yeah, I would say that's 100% true. Like one of the things that I've noticed when I've been testing him is is it's it's Haley, you, I always feel like I have to adjust like my entire play style around playing her correctly. Geist, I feel a lot more flexibility in when I can use my ability. Or if I don't end up using my ability, I don't feel as bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But it, it's also fair to say it's more constraining in the deck building stage. Yeah, that's true. But unlike Exile, there are a lot of decent trash can abilities in this game. There's a lot of decent ones. I think we're, we're getting better ones than we ever had before, which is maybe why Geist is getting better and better. I, I would agree with that 100%. And he's just, it's just, it's just very interesting whenever you can play an ID that forces your opponent to think of the runner differently. And Geist is definitely one of those. The other really cool thing about Geist is a lot of those trash can effects are instant. Yeah. Which is pretty nice. Which also has a side effect. Now, did you have it come up in the tournament where you got to use a trash can ability to draw a card to keep you from dying? <laughs> Um, I don't think it was ever um, the case of I had to do it to keep from dying. Maybe one of the harp, harp game. Yeah, maybe the harp game. But it was always a threat, right? I owned a, a few flatline decks, and it was always a case of I could do this, so they're not going to try. Right. It's a disincentive for them trying to kill you, because you can just be like, oh, nope, just kidding. I went from four, or I went to, you know, three to four cards, so now you're not going to be able to kill me with that one Scorch or whatever. Right, yeah. they just don't waste their time trying. Right. So, where do you want to start on this deck? Um, I mean, there's there's the basic core, um, which I think um, Geist has you know, received some power cards as, as the Mavad cycle went on. And I think now the, the basic core of Geist is probably the, the tech traders, right? Yeah. Well, let's, yeah, so let's start there. So, tech trader, for those of you who may not have seen it, is, let's be real, it, it's printed for Geist. I think that's fair. I think... Although, you know, maybe there's some Shaper decks that can make use of it with all those clone chips and SMCs. Maybe there's an alternate econ package. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. It is it's only, only one influence. One, it's only one influence. But it's a one-cost resource that says whenever you use a trash ability, you gain a credit. Oh, it's, tr it's just tremendous. Because it means that his ability is not one click of value. Now it's two clicks of value once you have one of these down. I think it's even, you know, it's, it's, it lets you fill your deck with trash can effects and, and forget economy entirely. That's also guys. true. Yeah, like the power of having three of these down cannot be understated. And then if you use a ghost break or a breaking and entering tool and, you know, you break a piece of ice and you gain a card in three credits, that's just madness. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's so important. So, when you were playing this game in the turn or deck in the tournament, are you mulliganing hard for this in an opening hand? This, it's this card um, and hostage as a as, you know as a pseudo tech trader because you can go fetch it. Right. Um, but th or, this or is a must one. And street peddler. But yeah. 
Yeah, it's just it's so good. The ideal hand, your know, opening hand, is is this, or maybe two of them, and a street peddler and a and a, a hopper. Oh, that's tremendous. That's a tremendous hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so from the t uh, the street peddler or not street peddler, the tech trader. Let's go right into the other resources. We we do have, as you had mentioned, we have three street peddlers, which is also a trash can ability. And it's also, you know, an amazing, amazing card. Alex White wrote a whole article on why Street Peddler is, is a great card. Yeah. I mean, it's it's deck acceleration, and we're running two levy in this deck, so anything that we lose is not going to be the end of the world. And it's free, right? Street Peddler's free. And you get a discount. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's just tremendous. And then if you're set up from a tech trader perspective, whatever you're pulling off as a surprise later for one cost discount is also giving you three credits and another card draw. That's right, yeah, it's it's incredibly important. And there's um there's a really nice thing with, with hostage as well, because I said the tech traders were so important, I put some hostages in to go fetch them. But if you play um if you play hostage, you have a similar thing to the Heritage Committee effect in, in IG decks, where you look at the top three cards of your deck first to see if if um you want to fetch a street peddler, and then you'll get those top three cards on a street peddler. And if you don't like them, you can go get a tech trader, and then you shuffle your deck. That's neat. That's really it's, neat. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really strong sometimes. That, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, so we've got one same old thing. I hear that being able to play levy is pretty important. Yeah, um, some, because there's two. Sometimes you'll have one in your hand, and you can use it for a same old, you know, siphon or or something else. Right. But it's largely an insurance policy, I would imagine. Yeah, um, there's, there's a sort of flex spots. I think you can go, you know, one or two same old things. Um, one is fine if you want to do two. That's also fine. It's, it's a matter of taste, really. Yeah, and and I think also it's important to note that same old thing is also a trash effect. Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got a political operative in this deck, which uh, is also a trash effect and a good one at that. Right, it's just a really strong card. You can take out things like Caprice, which otherwise is a real pain for this deck. Yeah. Uh, any deck, really. Yeah, any deck, really. Uh, unlike a lot of other criminals, though, I would say th this deck doesn't really care about the baddie trash a program thing. I'm not sure how true that is, because, um, you know, if, if they build a remote with two or three of one ice type on it and put a batty in there and trash, trash your permanent breaker, you can often only get in there once with your spikes or whatever i get yeah i mean yeah that makes sense yeah so, so you know baddie's still a deal it's right but it's, it's less, not it doesn't it's not effect. it's not a, it's not game ending when you lose your like when you use your lose your gordian blade as andy in the mid game and you just can't break code gates ever it's probably the, the biggest difference between geist and other criminals is you don't auto lose to a batty trap yeah i guess that's probably how i should have phrased that yeah um we've got film critic which this, is not a trash card, but it's still pretty good. Um, it's it's kind of important for two reasons. One is you can't afford to make multiple runs to try and steal future perfects. You just you just can't. Um, and this can be a lifesaver there. You can't understate the importance of not having to repeatedly run on a, on a future perfect in archives or in you know R and D or somewhere. It also helps if you're terrible at side games like I am. <laughs> yeah. The the other one is you can run quite poor. Um, Sometimes you'll get rich later, but often you'll be quite poor in the early game, and mid-seasons will utterly wreck you. Right, yeah, it helps. And, uh, and and we've got Hostage, so we've got two effective extra copies of it if we absolutely have to have it. Right, and sometimes that's the best thing to fetch. Yeah. So there's a lot of corp game plans right now that are just, like, very badly hurt by Film Critic. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It's also good for, you know, NPDs and future fetal AIs. There's lots of utility surrounding it. Yeah, I've been playing Custom. a lot of Seamus' uh, uh, Argus deck, and when people put down Film Critic, I just turn the ID over. I don't know if that's true for Film Critic, because, you know, those two clicks to get it off the Film Critic are I, a pretty big I, deal in Argus. It's a pretty fast deck when it wants to be. I know, I know. I'm just making it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, now I'm sad. Or actually, the real card for that is New Angeles City Hall, Then I'm just like, I'm just going to go ahead and turn that over. Sure, um, then, then, yeah, then you can argue. Sorry. But, uh, so, uh, we've got three Fall Guys, which is just so good in this deck. I remember when Geist was spoiled, I immediately thought of this card. 
Fall Guy is, is really interesting in Geist. Early, it's you know it's it's like an easy mark if you've got nothing on the board. It's two credits and a card, which is maybe even better than an easy mark. Right. And then later it gets better and better. So if you've got everything out, it's five credits and a card, which is bonkers. Right. It's a restructure with a card right. that costs you nothing. But it it also you know you can use four guys as four guys. I if you if you end up tagged or the corp has tagging plans, um, sometimes they really want to tag you just to get rid of the film critic. Um, you can use it to protect your film critic or you know your other resources. Sometimes and you can go tag and me make and, money while doing so. Right. You can. Yeah, <laughs> you can sometimes spam out siphon if you if you want to go that route and just use four guys to protect your stuff. And if the corp isn't you know, seen economy, that's fine. Right. Yeah, that's good. So going up to hardware, we have six spy cameras. So this has been like the the big discussion with Geist is you know is this card worth the six, six slots? You know, when is this card a good idea? You know, I was working on the the, the replicator build for replicator bazaar build jank for a while where it's, you know, install all six of them at one time and all that right. jazz. So you've obviously practiced this deck a fair bit. You've played it in competitive play. Give me some of your thoughts on this card, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and where it kind of fits in with Geist. So maybe it's easiest to start with the downside, which is there's six of them. And they go away. Like, it's R&D pressure, but it's transient. You only see the right. top card. There's only six, but there's also... Six is a lot. So it's almost, you know... It's a lot of card slots for, in some ways, a weak effect. When R&D's, you know, very, very open. Um, right. On the other hand, if all your breakers are those transient breaker and interest suite, you know, spike, crowbar, shiv, you don't want to be wasting them pinging R&D for single accesses. Um, yeah. Unless you know there's an agenda there, and this is, uh, you know, this is great for not wasting your time in R and D, and and it draws you a card and gets you credits when you've got the tech traders down. So it lets you go through your deck and set up while you're pressuring R and D, and that can be really important. Yeah, I I would say from my own experience to add to all the things that you've said that I agree with, is that it's tremendous also um, to get people to I can have gotten people to waste Jackson Howard's. <laughs> because I'll use it, I'll see an asset that I want to get rid of. Yep, that's the best I'll, play ever, right? I'll go and they'll pop Jackson with no agendas in archives. Right. And I'm just like, cool, I'll see a fresh card. Yep. Why not? And it, sometimes it's it's important to do that because if you if if then if you if you never do that, you never bluff like that. They'll always know that you'll that only you're, do you're it only when there's run. an agenda. Yeah. Right, exactly. And some so sometimes it's important to do it when there's just, you know, an asset. You, even if it's another Jackson or a, or a Caprice or a Batty, it's worth going to R&D. And if they pop Jackson, oh, well, that card's no longer on no the longer R&D there. and you get a fresh one. And sometimes yeah. if they if they call your bluff, you just get an agenda. Yeah, it's nice. I've seen people do that as well. Oh, you're bluffing. Yeah, no. I've seen that. I've seen that. I got it's a global unreal. food that way. Uh, yeah. I'm, there, he's just like, I think that you're screwing with me and there's no right. agenda. I'm like, cool. Yep. If that's how you feel. like, just, Yeah. <laughs> So it's important to mix it up. So I we've got three of let's be real, one of my favorite cards, newer cards. Like I love Sports Hopper. I think it's tremendous, especially in Geist. It's arguably worse other places, but in Geist it's just a tremendous way to not die and also accelerate your game. Sports Hopper is wonderful in Geist because it does it does a bunch of things. It 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 acts as a. I mean, the one everyone uses it for outside of Geist is it's a sort of pseudo plaskreed. Right. It lets you draw cards instantly and not die. But in Geist, you get an extra card. So it's really viable economic card draw when you've got the tech traders down or it comes off a street peddler. But it's, it's a quality also, time that refunds itself, basically. Right. Le, you know, late game, it's, it's bonkers. Um, but it's also Link. And that's actually relevant. Because of the breaking interest, injuring suite, you know, the, the spikes, the crowbars, or whatever. And some yeah. of the links important just to bust through trace ice these days. But, but yeah, it's 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 the fact that it's all of the it's all of these things. It's a really versatile card in Geist. And you can also have multiples of them down at once, which is tremendous, especially if you're up against, as you had said, a uh, a trace based deck. Yeah. And uh, it's just really good acceleration. The big uh, problem is it costs three. Yeah. Early game, that's tight. 
yeah, yeah that's tight it's, it's still it's still worth it but it's it's why you need those tetra raiders early game and that's why you need the hostages which is so funny because this type of deck the geist deck ends up being so rich in the mid to late game that like installing anything is trivial but right. early on you're like struggling for a couple of credits it's weird right there's this weird transition that suddenly happens normally when you've got like the second tech trader hits the field and all yeah. of a sudden everything just goes crazy because you yeah, go you're like oh i've got 30 credits now that's right. cool i guess you go from breaking even to suddenly everything making you money right and yeah. drawing you cards and it's worth noting, as you alluded to at the beginning of the video, that one of the things about Geist is it is different headspace than other runners that you're going to play. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a very unique um, style of runner compared to particularly other criminals. It's sort of like Shaper, but at the same time you, you ditch so much into archives. You know, So much of your board is transient, it can feel a bit like noise. Um, but it's also got some of the criminal tricks, so it, it still feels like a criminal deck, and you can got Siphon. Um, yeah. I love yeah. it. I remember when he first came out, somebody put up like a, a post on the Netrunner Geeks page that when they tried to make a deck with him, under the suggested cards, which had just launched, that feature had just launched, it said, Noise Hacker Extraordinaire, and I'm like, that's cold. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Would you rather just play Noise? It's like, maybe. Uh yeah. So we've got 2x Forger. Forger's, um, Forger's another of those cards of the trash ability. Um, and it can be pretty relevant, like Sea Source. Yeah. Um, but also it's a, a really economic way of clearing tags after a siphon. Yeah. Uh, you, mean, and you mean that you make money to clear the second tag? <laughs> That's right. It's like <laughs> you don't have the Desperado or the Gabe money, but you do have the Forger. Yeah. Um, I also appreciate that Forger's the only console that's not unique. Yeah, I like that too. It's a nice flavor. Yeah. But also it's a one credit link. So you don't need to waste time having a hopper, which is kind of expensive for a link. Right. You can just use use a hopper till you get a forger and then trash the forger. Right. Oh sorry, use use a use a hopper till you've got a forger and then trash the hopper. Yeah. It's it's good. Yep. We got two levies. This is one of the big discussion points. Is one levy or two in a geist deck. I also favor two. Talk to me about why you decided on two. I kept running out of cards, which is probably the best reason to put the second levy in. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think I think it could be something else. Like, it it could be that you can put more multi-access in and just win quicker. Yeah. So it could true. be an RDI or a Maker's Eye. I kind of favor the RDI at this point, thinking about more and more. Yeah. Um, but you know, it could also be um, the source or or some other, you know. Resource. Yeah. I mean That's... that was something that I mentioned on the deck list was that I I wanted to see the source but again as you mentioned uh, you know it might not matter like you still have to get it up quick enough right. for it to right. actually matter which is not insignificant because NEH you know I play NEH it could, they can just run away with the game ridiculously right. fast it doesn't take much to score you know a breaking news at 3 advance right. and, yeah. and then it's gone and then it's gone yeah okay. so we've got Two legworks. Legworks just a very solid criminal card. It's particularly good in Geist because when it's influence free multi access, which is pretty important. But um the other is if you put so much pressure on the remote and you do with those you know breaker entry stuff, it can really cause a clog up of agendas in HQ. And then if you're if Jackson's being used to defending in spy camera. Yeah. Um again you can end up with agendas piling up. It's a pretty important card. Yeah, it's probably one I mean, of your few outs against fast advance as well. That's also true. But going back to your point, I, I've noticed that in all the Geist builds that have been polished, once you get to that setup point, people describe what it's like at, on the corpse side as just basically being completely remote locked. Right. Because you, there's you can get in anywhere. So if the second something hits that server, you're going to go get it. Right. The question is, do you want to? Like It can be quite an investment sometimes, especially early mid-game. Late game right. often it's trivial, but sometimes you still don't really want to if it's a big enough server. Right. We've got two hostages, which, as we've already discussed, are multiple copies of our key connections. And they're, they're so useful. I was really on the fence about them, and then I tried. And um, it, it accelerates the game so much if you can get that tech trader out early. And if you sometimes it's better to get the street pedal, depending on what's on the top of your stack. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got two drive-bys, which... So 
Yeah. Tell me um, a little bit about that. They could be. It could be one or even zero drive by. I'm not. You know, this is maybe one of the cards you could swap for a siphon or another same old thing. But there's there's two really good arguments for drive by. One is the Jackson defense for spy camera. People often think it's really great to just leave Jackson in the remote or somewhere and uh, and just you know use him when you find an agenda with spy camera and shuffle the deck. And then if you get rid of a Jackson with a drive by, that's great. Right. Um. Or any, it can be good for Sanson as well. You know, anything in a remote that is big and expensive to trash, and that, but the court doesn't want to res. I was actually going to say hostile infrastructure is a good one too. Yeah, yeah, it gives you a little bit of game there. I, I don't think it doesn't solve the problem by a long way, but it gives you it's something. Yeah. Um, it's also really good because you know those a lot of the breakers are very transient. They get they've got trash cans on them, and you don't want to blow those wasting going after a Jackson or going after a pad know, campaign. Pad campaign that they or, right. Yeah. A bluff, basically, and it so it lets you call out, it lets you check first, and uh, and that can be really good on stage B. You know, if you if you take out a, an Adonis campaign, it lets you take out Caprice before she's rezzed. And so there's there's a few tricks you can do, like a double Caprice in a server to avoid the political operative if you have an unres piece of ice. Very weird set of rules that let you do that, but you can get rid of one of them. Yep. Um, or a batty that you don't want to reveal, so it forces them to show their hand a bit on the remote. Yeah. Which can be good as well. It is good. Yeah. Drive by. Solid card when it's good. Yeah. And then we have a singleton account siphon. So I think the best number of account siphons to run in Geist is between one and three. <laughs> Somewhere in that range. Yeah, because sometimes it's dead if they've got if they go crazy defending HQ or they're really rich, um, or they have a Christian grid that can be a really problem. Or um sometimes yeah, dead against Polana a lot of the time because they're so rich. Or you don't right. try and find the breaker combo you need to get in. Um, but you don't want to, to leave HQ open because you've got no HQ pressure. And you have the best HQ pressure in the game with a count siphon a lot of the time. Right. And, and if you can, can land it, it's just good setup money. Yep. Yeah, um, and as I said, you know, you have the four guys and the forgers, which you can play with those tags some. You can float them if it's no big deal with four guys defending your stuff if they're a poor right. corp. You know, PE is, is very vulnerable to that. Um, Argus. Um, it's just a really good card. You can you can race mid seasons. Um, if right. they around build up money for a mid seasons, you can you can do horrible things like steal the agenda and then account siphon and then float tags for a turn. It's so really they, good. You, there's 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 a, a ton of great plays with account siphon and it's one of the best criminal cards. So playing none is is just wrong. But three is often too much of an investment. So I think it's between one and three depending on you know who you're playing and what you're playing. And often it's better if they don't know how many copies you're running. I'd say that's true. So going over to Breaker Suite, we have a Corroder, which, if you're going to have a Fractor, it's a pretty good one to have. Yeah, I mean, they, there's there's a, an argument you could just run Breach and just rely on Spike for the remote, but one of the best counterplays to those transient Breakers is just to stack up the ice of the same type on the remote, and then it's very hard to get in. Yeah, I agree. We've got Crowbar, so it's worth noting that you maxed out on all of the breaking and entering tools, which I I like. So well, they then, almost they almost synergize ahead. with each other, right? Because their strength goes up the more breakers you've got. And you can install them all once you've got a single link down and just have the super right. rig. And there's five link in the deck, so yeah, you're backing these up with mongoose, which you got two of them, which is a tremendous card that also helped Geist along a little bit. Uh, a little bit, I think, yeah. Yeah. Just padding the B&E breakers enough without it being a central-only breaker is tr really good. It, it's often really relevant against Pup and, and uh, Cobra. Um, yeah. it, it breaks Assassin surprisingly efficiently for a, for Assassin. Yeah, that I, that's, that's true too. Um, I don't know if two is the right number. It might be one. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I feel like some of these numbers, because of how tight the slots in a Geist build always seems to be, it's really meta-dependent. Like, this deck has, like, a strong core that can be edited. Yeah, yeah. To f if you're playing up against a lot of, like, Wayland, maybe you don't need the extra Mongoose because they don't play a ton of sentries. They just play a handful of big sentries. 
and it's mostly barriers. You know what I mean? Like you got to yeah, do those types yeah, of I, reads. I think that's right. Yeah, like um, the the mongo the second mongoose was mostly just because sometimes you run out of shivs and you don't want to go through that after you've broken the first century. Do you really want to continue? You know. Right. So it, it's it's more insurance. I think if you're willing to play a little bit looser, you can easily go to to one mongoose and add a siphon or something. I think that's fair. Same old thing. We've also got Gordian Blade that in a land of uh, Archangels and Little Engines is pretty damn good. So Gordian Blade is really expensive to install. And it's it's not particularly more efficient than something like Zoo um, for small co-gates or Peacock for big co-gates. But it, it handles, you know, I was saying that best counterplay to the, the break-in intro ones is stack all your ice of the same type. Yep. So that's where Gordian Blade shines. You know, it turns that off for code gates. Right, and that's something that I ex also experience where people will be like, "Ha ha, I've got you know two archangels on the same server," and I'm like, "Ha ha, I've got Gordian Blade." So right, I'll although, play all of that plus one additional credit. Although usually, you know, the early game you can just lose something to archangel, and late game you can just trace through it so right but yeah it's there's certainly a big case for a gordian well, blade for turing stack turing is the main reason yeah that's it, also gone away but that's the main reason yeah yeah it's just fantastic uh when you can afford it it's harder to put down early yeah so this is the deck everybody it's it's got a lot of the, it's very interesting because it has a lot of the different elements that people have been talking about with geist and then it's just kind of congealed together into something that's focused on being as efficient as possible as opposed to trying to like go all in on off-campus apartment or go all in on trash can abilities you, you seem to really keep your head as far as just focusing on making sure that the deck uses his ability but also you know works Right, I, I try to really focus it down to the to the core good stuff without trying to add combo bits. Right, I just yeah. wanted to make it tight. Yeah, because let me tell you, Replicator Bazaar feels amazing, but man, is it hard to set up. Right, when it works, I bet it it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. It feels amazing when you have like two tech writers down and you install six spy cameras on the same click, and people just like lose their minds. It yeah. feels great, but that's very hard to set up. I mean, Tech Writer is an interesting card that's not in this deck. Yeah. That's a, a big example of cards that other people have been experimenting with and always ask about. There's just no room. There's no room. I mean, like, you, if you, you'd basically want to drop the hostages for them, I suspect. Yeah, and as for we've discussed, the, in a competitive setting, the hostages are just better. Because it, it so. makes the deck more consistent. And in the late game, I agree with your, your Tech Writer discussion that uh, we had before. That you know, it's it it by the time they're good, they're largely win more because you already have tons of money because you're set up geist. Right. How much money? Yeah. Once you've got ten ten cards installed to get your giant tech writer, you don't need ten more credits. You have ten cards installed. Right. Which you can then trash to make three credits a piece. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. But, so this is the deck. I go ahead. You were gonna say. Something. I was gonna say there's the the changes I probably make now. Um, okay. Just basic ones that don't really change. Um, much is probably drop one mongoose and drop okay. one drive by. Okay. And add one same old thing on one account siphon. So go up to two account siphon and two same old things? Yep. Yeah, that's fair. So, Brendan, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. That, it great to talk about Geist. It's uh, always something I like to talk about. He's great. He's fantastic. So we're going to take it over to competitive Jinteki and we're going to find ourselves an opponent and see how we do until we see you all again. Always be running. <laughs>